I, when you say that the majority of the general public um, are in favour of the Rwanda deal, I think the general public, by and large, want to see um, the crossing stopped and they want to see um, the exploitation of, uh, of people by traffickers stopped. And I think that there are ways that you can do that that don't involve sending people off to Rwanda. And, uh, and so I, the majority of the speeches in the House of Lords tonight were to say this was hugely expensive and I think the general public should be told just how much it's costing to take very few few people to Rwanda. Mm. But in Rwanda, that they might be in a lot of danger because Rwanda is not a very safe place. And just calling it safe um, doesn't make it safe. And, uh, and the other thing is that we, there's a reciprocal arrangement, and nobody talks about this, which is mm. that we're going to accept people that Rwanda want to send to us mm. because they're vulnerable asylum seekers from perhaps the Congo and places that have gone where people have fled to Rwanda. Okay. And they want to send them here. And I hope that the general public know that, especially GB uh, listeners, because mm. I don't think you're busy telling them. On this massive, massive issue, which clearly we cannot get right at the moment, ping-pong in the House of Lords, the public just wants it sorted, OK? Why would you be opposed to a referendum? Is it because you think you would lose? No, I don't think it, I don't think that we would lose at all if there was a proper uh, uh, discussion and debate, and all the facts were given to the general public. I don't believe that that uh, the general public are being well informed on this. I think that this is a flag that is being run up the flagpole um, um, based on a deception of the general public because they're being told that, uh, that this is a way of dealing with the problem. It's only going to be, mean a, a very small number of, of people will be sent uh, to Rwanda. They're talking about a couple of hundred people. In the scheme of things, that's nothing. And it's costing us £400 million. When, mm. when people are living in... in, in, in facing hardship every day in this country. Mm. £400 million into the pocket of Kagame, who runs a very authoritarian regime in Africa. And do you think the people of Africa are going to benefit from that money? I don't mm. suspect so. Okay. So, I mean, I mean, let's get the facts right. And we're going to be receiving their asylum seekers who have got problems. And it's because we've got a health system that can deal with them and a mental health system that can deal with them. And mm. they don't have any psychiatrists or psychologists. And they don't have anybody to help people who've got psychological problems. Okay. As a country that had genocide 30 years ago and where a quarter of the population has mental health problems. Mm. OK, yeah, no, fair points. But do you think the Rwanda plan shames us all? Do you not think it's shameful that we spend £8 million a day on housing illegal immigrants, people don't now feel safe in their communities because of things like migrant hotels uh, and housing stockings? You're stock saying illegal immigrants. You're saying yeah. it's a, it, they're, they're, they're people applying for asylum. Okay. You're making people a judgment who, people already. Who have entered, people You're basing who, no, a judgment already. I am, yes. No, I am, and I'm not making any bones about that. I don't mind you saying that because that is exactly what I'm doing, all right? So people who have entered Britain illegally in accordance with the Illegal Migration Bill... And people are now using up housing stock for some of these people. Do, do you not think that shames Britain or do you not care? No, I think I think I, I don't think it shames Britain. I think it's actually one of the things that's a great value about Britain. That a young, that that a young always, single, that a young but, single but, mum who's seeing domestic violence can't get a flat because somebody who's just arrived here can. You think that's something that you value about Britain? I think that Britain is a country that is trying to solve its social problems. And they, there are many, and I have argued for domestic violence, uh, um, people fleeing them to be given accommodation, of course. But you're, you're, you're really not arguing this fairly. You know that. Um, you're being... You're, you're being controversial just for the sake of it. Oh, I'm not I mean, being controversial just people, for the sake of it. No, I, I am, people, with, with respect, I think stop I'm it. holding a mirror stop up it. to the population stop more it. than you are. Stop it. Just stop it and listen. There are people who are fleeing uh, Syria. Syrians, Syria has the worst reputation for, for torture of, of probably most countries. There are people who are fleeing Afghanistan who basically worked for the British Army but who couldn't get out in the evacuations mm. and we have left them stranded. And so they're the people and often they're joining members of their family here. They would, they're, they're clever, smart people okay. and we have a, a shortage of certain kinds of skills. So in fact, these people want to work. So most immigrants who've come to this country have what added evidence, to what the, evidence the do you, of this What country. evidence do you have that of the people who've come to Britain across the Channel so far, any of them have been a net benefit economically to this country? 
Well, most they're not allowed to work. We've made a rule in Britain to say that asylum seekers are not permitted to work. And, and many of them become depressed because of that, because they want to work and make a contribution. They want to but be what, able to pay what, what rent evidence, and to be able to find... What evidence they don't is want that? To Seriously, what, what evidence is there to suggest that if we allow them to work, they would go on to be a net benefit? Because I interviewed the former Immigration Minister, Robert Jemrick, who has said to me on record that there are people who, by the way, include murderers and rapists who come across the channel, who he thinks the vast majority of them, A, can't speak English, and B, will never be a net benefit economically to this country. So what evidence do you have that contradicts if a guy who's, who's seen the data from inside the Home Office, with respect? People like you said exactly the same thing about the many Jews who came to this country in the 30s fleeing Excuse persecution. Me. What, what and do you they mean have, by that? And they have added hugely, they have added hugely to the, to the benefit of this country. Excuse and me, so don't that, tell that's an absolutely outrageous accusation. That you say people like me have said that Jews fleeing the Holocaust no, no, no. were no, no, in no, the no. same you've not about, no, issue no, no. as you're people saying coming people. over you're saying, this country. You're I'm, saying I'm it's about people... You. I've quoted you, no, our former no, immigration minister. Uh, no, I have quoted to you that our former immigration minister has done an interview with me during which he has said that people who are rapists, murderers and terrorists have come across the channel and we were unable to deport them. And now you're telling me that I would have said the same thing about Jews fleeing the Holocaust. That's outrageous. D many people were absolutely hostile to the arrival of Jews in the 30s and they have benefited this country. You asked me for evidence uh, that I could give you that, that, that immigrants you coming to the country to say that I wouldn't have allowed benefit. Jews to flee the Holocaust. That's... That is not what I said to you, and you're twisting my words. So I, there's no point in having a debate with someone like you if you don't listen to what someone's saying. Think of all of the people who are in our cabinet whose parents came as immigrants to this country. So many people come to this country and contribute hugely, and when they arrive here, they often don't speak English very well at all. So please is don't that say not, that. My mother-in-law... Sorry, my mother -in -law you're not, in not, not talking about legal immigration, though, and that's different, isn't it? Legal immigration no, no, no. we're the talking people, about. People, and actually, we are worse came... off GDP per capita. We are not doing better GDP per capita, and, and you must know that. Sorry, I've got to go back into the chamber, and I really find that you're not someone who debates in a fair way, and you should do. It's disgraceful. You're not an interviewer discussion? that I respect, and I'm going to close this down now.